Hi, and welcome to TechNut. Today we're doing another video on setting up your Arc Survival Vault server. A few months back, we showed you how to do this using the official server manager, but since there's been some reported problems with that video, we're doing another video with an unofficial server manager that I know for sure works very well. Just like in the last video we made on the Arc Survival Evolved server setup process, most of the heavy lifting is done by the server manager, so it shouldn't be too much hard work. However, you will need some pretty powerful hardware. We're running this on a 2 virtual core virtual machine with 4 gigs of RAM, which I would say is pretty much the minimum that you would require to run only the Arc Survival Evolved server. We're going to start by running the zip file. You will find the link to a forum thread containing the latest versions in the video description. We're going to start by extracting it to the desktop. Once that is done, we're just going to fire up the Arc Server Manager. At this point, you could be getting a warning that you need to install a later version of .NET Framework. The installer has a link to the version you need, so all you need to do is click Yes and install it and then rerun the Server Manager. When that is done, you will get prompted to select a data directory to store the game data. Just click OK and select the folder where you'd like to store it. In our case, we're just going to put it in the folder called Latest and we're going to give it the name Arc. Select the folder. You get prompted saying that SteamCMD will save files in the following directories and we're going to say that it's OK. SteamCMD will run for the first time. This is a utility used to download the game directly from Steam. Once the server manager has started, click the tab to create a new profile. You can give your profile a name if you'd like, so we're just going to call it TechNut. The profile is mainly used if you want to move the server to another server, or something like that. However, the first thing that you will need to do is download the game data. It's about 30 gigabytes, so it's going to take a while. To start the process, just click install. The Arc Server Manager will now connect to Steam and download all the data. Since this is not a very fun thing to watch, we're just going to cut here and get going when the thing is done. Once the download has completed, the Steam CMD window will close. This means that we now have our version installed. As you can see, the installed version matches the latest version that is available. So this is a good thing. Uh, from using the official server manager, I know that that was a bit buggy, so I usually hit the save button a lot to make sure that I don't lose anything. Well, the process is now saved, and we'll get on with the settings. Of course, we want to set a server name, so we're just going to call this one TechNut Server. Uh, the server password is something that I won't be using. I'm just going to bother with changing the admin password as this is only for demonstration purposes and will likely be changed if we decide to run the server for a longer time. As you can see, the ports, which we, which we will have to open a little bit later. Um, as you can see, the local IP is already correct, so we won't have to do anything there. We can adjust the max players, let's say 30 slots. Now you have the idle timeout. Archon port, stuff like that that I haven't used. You can enter mods and stuff like that. Um, but the autosave period is, of course, very interesting. Uh, if you lose your dinosaurs, you can just kill the server and uh, get them back unless the server has saved. You can enter a message of the day. I'm just going to say welcome. It's not going to show for 20 seconds, it's going to show for 5 seconds. You have some anti-sheet stuff, uh, which I won't be bothering with. Automatic management is of course something that wasn't, uh, that at least I wasn't able to configure in the official server manager, but uh, seems like something that you can do here, so that's a good thing. You can set your hardcore mode and stuff like that, set a lot of settings regarding PvP, PvE, stuff like that, chat settings in the crosshair, stuff like that. And of course, uh, the XP multiplier, which uh, a lot of people like to adjust. So you can do this here, of course. You can adjust a lot of things, but uh, we won't go through 
any of that because uh, you can pretty much figure this out on your own and decide what you would like. But as you can see, there are a ton of settings available. And I think this might be even more than in the official server manager. I'm not entirely sure though. So before we start up the server, let's go back to the top here. Uh, I think we have everything set up to start the server, so uh, what we need to do is open the ports in the Windows Firewall. Uh, to do this, we're going to use PowerShell. It's going to go to my other screen and grab a few rows of texts. What we want to do is run it as an administrator and paste in the commandlets. Uh, these are of course available in the video description, as always, so we're just going to right-click and the firewall rules will be created. To run the last one I have to press enter, so I'm going to do that. And now the server should be able to communicate with other computers on my lawn. If you want to play with people outside of your local network, you will need to open these ports in your firewall as well, which will most likely be your router. Since all routers are different, and mine is a very uncommon one, uh, there is no use for me to show you this actually. But if you have any problems, uh, feel free to ask us in the comments below and we'll try to help you out as much as we can. But basically we should be ready to start now. So I'm going to close PowerShell. So we're ready to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit save again to make sure that our changes were saved of course. And then we're going to hit the start button. This window of course, if you have run the official server manager, it looks very familiar. You'll have to wait uh, about 5 minutes before the server is available. So we're going to cut here and get back to you as soon as it has started up. Once you see the full startup text, uh, you know that the server should be available. So we're now going to head into the ARC game itself and see if we can find the server. So we're in the game. We're going to play join ARC and under server to LAN, we should find the server. So we're going to try to join it. When your friends try to join the server, they should select server filter unofficial. As you can see, our messages of the day is displayed, and we're ready to play the game. And there you have it. Your server should now be up and running, you should be able to play with all your friends, and have a good time. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and don't forget to subscribe for more.